I did a post about World of Tanks on Facebook to my friends a few months ago. And a friend of mine, uh, Daryl Styers, mentioned World of Tanks isn't as good as War Thunder. And I thought, you know what, I don't think so. Like I've seen videos. But I couldn't quite say why or artic articulate it any more than that because I'd never played the game. So uh, I downloaded the game and I've uh, played a few hundred battles. And I'm going to do a video now to tell you my comparisons and which game I think is better. Uh, I'm going to list the things that War Thunder does right. Um, first of all, I've been playing video games for 30 years. Um, I don't do the type of videos that show you like numbers and graphs and like that kind of information. What I'm doing for you, uh, the viewer, is just breaking it down at a gut level and explaining to you just hopefully with simple words uh, my feelings and thoughts and my rationale behind my thoughts. So first off, War Thunder has awesome physics. Like the physics model is far superior to than World of Tanks. Um, the tank feels really tanky. Like see it, a tread lo locks up when you're turning, and when you turn, it just feels tanky. The tank feels heavy. When it turns, it like it really swipes, and it feels like it's on tracks. And also, the gun feels awesome when you fire it, and the sound is great. So, the models are awesome. The physics are awesome. And that part of the game shines very strong. So if that matters to you the most, then maybe this game is better than World of Tanks. But. I like how the bushes uh, get pushed down and then they, they pop back up after. The foliage is really done well. And that part of the game is just awesome. Another thing I like about the game is when you fire you have to adjust for distance. This guy's an AI dude. And he's probably gonna kill me. So that's really cool. Like, um, I'm a hunter, and when I'm hunting deer, if there's a deer that's 300 yards away, I have to aim high. I have to aim a bit high uh, to compensate for the bullet drop. So War Thunder does that, and it doesn't do it. Like, uh, World of Tanks also has bullet drop, but it calculates for you. Um, this game here. Um, doesn't do that for you. So if you're shooting like a mile away or like really far, you have to compensate for the bullet drop. As you can see, this game doesn't have hit points. Like you just shoot and it, the shell penetrates and breaks stuff inside the tank or it doesn't. There's no like 
hit points or anything like that. Um, which I think is kind of cool. Like, uh, the bigger tanks just deflect more shots and can take more damage. Um, but it's not like there's a hit point value. Oh, well, that was a weird bug there. Um, another good thing about War Thunder is the giant maps and the realness of the maps. Like, the maps just feel like a real battle. World of Tanks oftentimes has a very video gamey type of level. Feels like someone sat down and thought, okay, we need to make a video game level now, let's do that. Where this one really feels like a, some kind of authentic, uh, some kind of authentic authenticity that World of Tanks is lacking when it comes to maps and um, battle spots. And this is another of the greatest features too, is when you die, it shows you where the bullet came from, who shot it, and there's a replay on your death. And uh, that eliminates a lot of frustration, I think, when you can see that you were killed uh, honorably, or you know you were killed fair and square, and it wasn't just some, uh, you know, you just didn't feel like you got screwed by the game, but you can actually see how and why you died and it helps you get better I think so world of tanks just doesn't have anything like that like sometimes you just get blown up ammo racked and you're like oh someone killed me from somewhere that I can't see great um, this is the research tree here in, in war thunder I'm not gonna get into that right now but uh this is the tree it only goes to tier 4, so I should say right off the bat that it's not a fair comparison because World of Tanks has been out much longer than the Ground Forces portion of War Thunder. So World of Tanks had a huge head start. That's why probably their physics model is a little bit more older, so that's why this one has better physics, but um, the rest of the game um, has a lot of room for improvement. Like you can see they have uh, T-54 medium, an IS-4 heavy, and a SU-122. So, um, not best. Not the best selection. Uh, there's other countries. Here's the German. Here's the American. So, light tank, medium tank, Patton. 103 heavy, this thing, and a T95 TD. They don't really have artillery in this game, the same as uh, World of Tanks, so if you really hate arty, maybe you would prefer this. But this thing is like a machine gun thing, and I think it's for like blowing up uh, planes. So I'm working on the Russian tree. Um. Yeah, like I said about the maps, they're bigger. Um, better, I think. There's just not as many of them, so you kind of can get sick of the same maps over and over. I know I have. Um, but they're so big and expansive that you can always look for different sweet spots that you've never seen before within the same map. So I think they might be maybe as big as four times as large as World of Tank ones. So it gives you this little uh, screen at the beginning telling you uh, like what map it is and what you got to do and stuff. And I have to emphasize that there isn't a map I hate because they're so huge. Like you might hate a certain part of the map, uh, but there's not one map in War Thunder that I hate. Like they're all good or they have good parts about them and they're all pretty equal and balanced and stuff. So. Never once have I been like, oh, not this map, I hate this map. Like, I always like any map on the game. Like, they're all done so well, and there's parts about them that are good, so... Uh, it kicks World of Tanks' butt when it comes to maps, I think. It's the size of them and the realism of them. Yeah.
So I think that covers basically the things that War Thunder does right. And I'm just going to list the things that World War Thunder does right. Because, uh... What we can learn from that is, in my opinion... Um... World of Tanks, uh... Is better in every other regard, other than the things I'm mentioning there. Um, there's two things that I'm going to mention that to me are subjective. Like, for you, the viewer, this could be a feature. Um... But I don't know, maybe you might hate it too. So the first thing is calling in airs or yeah, calling in airstrikes. Um, it's not available right now. But I don't even think it's available maybe even in this whole tank. But certain tanks can call in airstrikes, which is the War Thunder equivalent of artillery. So all you do is you press a button, then it gives you an overhead view of the map, and, you, and it says like, well, where do you want the airstrike to go? And then you can just like point anywhere and then bring down uh, oh, see, it shows where I hit them and hit where I hit the guy and how he blew up. But I could call down an airstrike, say, on this target here, and it just bombards the area. I think that's one there. So, like, some people might say, oh, good, there's no arty. Well, at least the arty in uh, World of Tanks is, like, human controlled. And, like, uh, if you get killed by it, um, you know, another human was able to do that shot on you. On this one, if you get killed by the bombardment, like, I think it feels worse because someone just pressed a button and called down a whole bunch of barrage on an area and you were just dumb enough to get caught in it, so... Uh, it's not like a great... To me, it's not a great feature. It doesn't help battle in, uh, in any way, in my opinion. The next thing that's similar to that is, uh, you can see in the bottom, 7, 8, 9 is a plane. Oh, here comes, here comes artillery fire. So I have to move behind a building. Um, yeah, so at certain points in the game you can control a plane and fly it around and stuff. To me, I don't want to, I don't want to fly a plane. I want to drive tanks and I want to have, like, tank battles. So... It's like they're forcing stuff on me that I don't want. See, someone called down a uh, bombardment on me, and I just moved out of the way, so... Um... Yeah. Not really... Not really into the... Like, random... Warplane thing. See that guy starting a battle in a bomber? Um... For me, I don't care. It's just... It makes the game worse, actually. So, uh... I guess I could mention some criticisms I have. See, I love this. I, I have to aim high to hit that guy. I like that. But, um, some things I hate about the game. Um, I think, uh, it feels like... There's no point to the game. Maybe it's because I'm not a part of a clan or I'm not really into the community as much, but like I might as well, it feels like I might as well be playing Minesweeper or Solitaire or something because it is online, but um, it doesn't seem like anything matters. I didn't even notice this guy. Yeah, so some of the things I hate about the game. Um, like, if you're really awesome at this game, I think 
Maybe it's because you're good at calling down artillery, or maybe it's because you're like really awesome when you get in the airplane. Because when you're in the planes, you can like bomb enemy tanks and stuff. So, uh, you know, like, what's, how do we determine how good someone is in this game? It's not, it might not be because they're just great at shooting a cannon and hitting other tanks. Like, there might be other reasons for them being good. That has nothing to do with tank battles. So that's something to think about. I think that how uh, limited the selection is in the research tree really sucks. Like, it's not fun. There's no real selection of tanks. And even researching is weird. Like, you don't really get a choice. Like, you just press the research button after every battle and then stuff happens. So it's not like you can choose to get the gun upgraded first or anything. It's just like a linear path of researching where eventually your tank gets better. And same thing with your crew, like upgrading the crew is really weird. They have like a million different things they can get better at and you like incrementally make them a little tiny bit better at stuff. And each crew member has all these stats. Oh, that's cool. The game just moved me to the right. <laughs> yeah, got hit by that. Artillery fire. And my tank is burning and I'm getting blown up. Um. Yeah, so the selection of tanks and only going to tier 5 is like kind of boring. And I just have to say that I played the game and there's, there's things that I like that I mentioned. But there wasn't much incentive to play. Like, I don't know why I was playing. I was like, oh, okay, someday I can get an IS-4. And awesome. Well, I guess there's three subjective things. The other one is respawns. So, after you die, you respawn. And you can pick a different tank from your garage. I think that this could be implemented as an option in World of Tanks. Like, I'd like to see them take a page from the book of War Thunder and implement a garage battle version where you pick three tanks or two tanks from your garage and they're in queue and within the same battle you can play them uh, consecutively one by one after they get blown up. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, but in this, for the purposes of War Thunder, it's just forced upon you and uh, like not as much repercussions for dying I think and like who cares if you die just pick a different tank and go and battles are won not by um, killing stuff but by uh, capping areas so it becomes like a war of attrition is where people are just like if you think um, lemming rushes are bad in world of tanks like uh, or thunders who cares if you die you can just play one of your other tanks So you just respawn until you run out of tanks to play in, so I don't know how that's fun for people, but um, to me I like the tactical, uh, I like the tactics of having only one life. Like it's not really a YOLO rush if you can respawn, right? So. For me, what what does it come down to? Like, what would I rather choose? I'd rather choose uh, World of Tanks every time. There's a few things that uh, War Thunder does better. 
But other than that, World of Tanks wins in every way. And it's, uh... It's a much better game. So that's my comparison, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, feel free to disagree with me. I'm not saying I know everything. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm wrong on a lot of things, and maybe I didn't play War Thunder enough, but I have been playing it for about uh, three months. And not like now and then. It's not like I'm playing it every day. I am devoting most of my time to World of Tanks, but I have given this game a chance, and uh, there are some things that I like, but I think that um, World of Tanks is still a better game, and my hope is that uh, developers at Wargaming.net will see this video, or maybe they'll try the uh, War, War Thunder themselves and uh, be able to see some stuff that they could improve their game on. So please subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, like me on Facebook. I could use the likes, and I'll be giving away free gold soon once I get to 100 likes. And I'd like to have uh, regular prizes and, and giveaways on my on my Facebook page. So thanks for watching, guys.